one of the most acclaimed political, cultural, literacy, literary, excuse me, and hip hop voices in America today. Kevin is a native of Jersey City, New Jersey, raised by a single mother in extreme poverty, but managed to study at Rutgers University in New Brunswick, thanks to New Jersey's Educational Opportunity Fund. Kevin has gone, to, gone on to be one uh, author of 11 books, including Barack Obama, um, uh, Ronald Reagan, and the Ghosts of Dr. King, blogs and essays. Among his on upcoming uh, book and his memoir of a very difficult childhood and youth, which is to be released this year. Give him a hand. And in 2016, he will publish a biography of Tupac, Tupac Shakur, the late rapper and controversial American icon. Kevin's writings has appeared in major publications such as CNN.com, Esquire, Ebony, the Huffington Post, Essence, and Ebony Magazine. In addition, in addition and he's also yeah, been privileged to interview very uh, prolific people just like Tupac Shakur, Tupac Shakur excuse me, and General Colin Powell. Collegiate Knights, please welcome Mr. Kevin Powell. Is this on? Is this that? So I gotta use this. So, so that, that one, this is for that. Yeah. Can y'all do me a favor? Can y'all stand up for a second? Yo. All right, sit down for a second then, since y'all sucking your teeth. Can y'all stand up for a second? I said please. All the students. Y'all been sitting here for a minute, right? What'd you say? No? So good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm from Brooklyn, New York, from New York City, and I'm happy to be here with y'all in DC, first and foremost. Uh, second, I just need to say this. I believe in y'all. Do y'all believe in yourselves? Yes. I need them to hear this all the way in New York where I'm from, and I need y'all to say it like you mean it, all right? All right? She's clapping. She's ready. How you doing? What's up? I see everything. I, I am, am a, a genius. genius. In the back, I, I am, am a, a genius. genius. In the front, I, I am, am a, a genius. genius. Everyone, I, I am, am a, a genius. Give you yourselves a round of applause. Y'all can sit down. Give yourselves a round of applause. So what I want to do, I don't want to talk, because I'm going to be honest with y'all. I think a lot of speakers are mad corny. And when I was in high school, in my four years in high school, I don't remember a single speaker who came to speak to my school each year. You know why? They all said the same thing, go to college. And we were like, after the first year, we got that message. Say something to me that I can actually relate to. Am I right, y'all? That's real talk, since we're talking about real talk. I'm not with that, just give a speech and y'all don't talk because y'all are the most brilliant generation that we have in this country. Y'all are incredibly important. Just by a show of hands, how many of y'all have traveled to at least five states in this country? Okay, anyone been in New York City? All right, okay. How many of y'all have a passport and you've been out of the country? There's fewer hands. I need three people, two, two young ladies and two men to stand up and tell me where you've been out of the country. Nice, we got mics, we have mics. Do we have mics, do we have mics? Can y'all speak loud enough? Can, will this work for your camera? Someone said they've been, who said they've been to Florida? Okay, where have you been? Ethiopia, that's what's up. One of the oldest civilizations in the world. Give her a round of applause. Where have you been? What'd you say? Italy. And Italy. Yeah, and I've been to Wait, hold on a second. Hold on. Hold on a second. Italy and no, wait, one second, young lady. What's your name? Amber Dickinson. Miss Dickinson? Dickinson. Dickinson. What was so funny about her going to Italy? I'm trying to understand. What'd you say? What'd you say? Italy. Where else? In Canada. Toronto. Toronto, Canada. Let's give her a round of applause. Two young men. Two young men. Two young men. We've been out of the country. Two young men. None of the fellas have ever been out of the country. Fellas in the front row. Right here. Talking. Y'all ever been out of the country? Okay. 
Southeast DC? He said, that's out of the country. Okay. Any fellas been out of the country at all? That's deep. Let me say a couple of things, y'all. In the back, no, y'all gotta come up. You gotta come up. You gotta come up. You gotta come up. You can't play the back. We got enough brothers playing the back wherever I go. It should not be at this school. Fellas, come on up. Why are they coming up? How many of y'all watched the games last night? Any of y'all basketball fans? Okay. Who won last night? Dallas or the, Ro or the Rockets? I'm getting to the Wizards in a second. But who won that game? Dallas and Houston. Anyone know? The Rockets won? You think the Wizards gonna win the championship? They gonna get past LeBron? Okay. What makes the Wizards so good? Bradley Bill? John Wall. Who's the young man that wants to say something about where he's been? Okay, you got the mic? You got the mic? Uh, I've been to Puerto Rico and the Bahamas. Puerto Rico and the Bahamas, give him a round of applause. Yes, sir. You been to where? Dubai. Where's Dubai at for those who don't know? Would you say? No, 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 no. You got to be serious, son, for a second. Where's Dubai at? You forgot? Which? Hold oh, no, keep the mic. Keep the mic. Africa. Dubai's in Africa? Is that true? No. Where's Dubai at? No, keep the mic. Stop trying to pass the mic. Where's Dubai at? What'd you say? It was a joke. I apologize. They wanted me to joke around. Wait, what did he say? It was a joke. I apologize. So you have not been to Dubai? No. Okay. All right. What's your name, sir? Keep the mic for a second. Hold on, y'all. Hold on, y'all. There's a song by Aretha Frank, an old school song. What's it called? Starts with an R. So let's respect each other. We're geniuses, right? Y'all are geniuses, right? We gotta at least be able to focus a little bit. What's your name, sir? Okay, what grade are you in, sir? What do you want to do with your life? Be a biomedical engineer. Be a biomedical engineer. Let's give him a round of applause. Keep the mic on. That means that you love math and science? How are you? Hold the mic up, sir. What'd you say? Yes, sir, I do. How are your grades? They, they what? Pretty they pretty iffy. I can't really get that high in the school because of the teachers. Because of the teachers? You don't blame the teachers? Hold on, hold on. Let's listen to him. This is important. Because of what, sir? I'm sorry, I can't get my teachers. I have problems with my teachers. A lot of my teachers. Not a lot of my teachers, but my core teachers, I have problems with Why? Probably because of my work ethic. Your work ethic. So now he's being honest. Yo, what does work ethic mean? Let's pass the mic. What does work ethic mean? What does that mean? I need, you know what? I want three young ladies and three young men to come up here. Let's talk for a second. Three young men and young, three young men to come up front. Who have not spoken yet. Three young men, three young men. Right in the middle, right in front. Three young men, three young women. All right, so I'm going to call on you. Y'all two fellas, come on up. Come on up. Okay. I need two more young ladies. Two more young ladies. Two more young ladies. Come on up. Come on up. You a lady? You a lady? I did like the Kendall Hold on a second. Let, let me let me say something, y'all. So Y'all heard when uh, Miss Simone was introducing me, right? She said I got, I'm got i about to publish my 12th book, and I'm traveling around this country. The reason I'm asking this question, y'all, about work ethic, about travel, I didn't get on a plane until I was 24 years old. You know what I'm saying? But in the, over the last 20 years or so, I've been to all 50 states and five to seven continents. And Dubai is in the Middle East. It's not in Africa. It's close to Africa. You know what I mean? But it's important that y'all take seriously your education. Now, she also mentioned that I'm writing a biography of who? Tupac Shakur. So I've worked in the entertainment industry for a long time. I know a lot about hip hop. I'm a hip hop head for life. I know a lot about this world of entertainment, mass media, culture, social media, all of that stuff. That stuff is important to me too. But I'm just gonna keep it 100 with y'all. You know, I go from place to place around the country, and a lot of times, you know, even our most brilliant students in this country, I'm not just talking about blacks, I'm talking about all of us, 
We can talk about stuff that's happening in sports and video games, you know, who's got beef with who, but when we start talking about serious stuff, only a few of us actually are able to articulate about that. But then when I go overseas to countries like Japan, young people just like y'all, not only do they know Japan, Japanese culture and history, they know y'all better than we know ourselves. I'm telling y'all, I know this from experience from traveling overseas. They can break down the history of hip hop, they can tell you what's on the radio right now, and they can tell you who created hip hop. They can tell you who the family fathers and mothers are of hip hop just like that. They can name the five elements of hip hop just like that. Now, y'all probably was like, well, why is that important? It's important because while all of this is going on, while we're being distracted by iPhones and Androids and all these gadgets and social media sites, what's happening in our communities? Young black men are getting shot down all over the place. Y'all feel me? What's happening in our communities? Prisons are being built at a fast rate all over this country. What's happening in our communities? Violence is out of control. You know what I mean? And so we got to take, there's nothing wrong with bugging out and having fun. I got mad jokes, trust me on that. You know what I mean? I love having a good time. You know, I don't want to be around someone who's always serious 24 7. That's mad corny, right? You know, you got to be able to loosen up and have some fun in life. Word. But you also got to have what I call balance, y'all. That's important. And so I want to ask the question again what is a work ethic? And what does that mean to y'all? Who got the mic? Yes, sir. Say your name, how old you are. My name is Jonathan Watts. But guess what? Pretend I'm not here because this is also about, y'all know what? It starts with a G. Which means that you, you got to words. You said it like, yeah. Look into the audience. Don't look at me. I'm not here. I want y'all to practice public speaking while we're doing this too. Make eye contact because geniuses have confidence in themselves. Thank you, sir. What's your name? I'm 18. Let him speak though. Work, work ethic means, you know, it doesn't matter what it is or it doesn't matter what you're going through. It's work ethic to me means, you know, you doing whatever you need to do to get to where you want to go. Okay. How many of y'all really like to work hard? <laughs> oh, you know what? That's, uh, that's honest. So how many of y'all do enough to get by? Be honest about it. Wow. Okay. Now, I'm going to tell y'all. I'm, ha I'm so happy to be here, but in the past, I've had an opportunity to meet the folks who run these schools, including the founder of this, this, this charter school system that y'all are part of. And do we really think that this, this, these institutions would exist if they weren't working hard? Y'all feel me? Anyone? Anyone out there? Okay. Y'all talking about y'all rooting for the Wizards. Do you really think the Wizards would be where they are if Bill and Wall and all those folks weren't working hard? if they didn't practice. So we gotta take that seriously. Every hand should be going up that you love to work hard. You know what I mean? Nothing is handed to you if you don't work hard. Who's next? Well, let's go down. Well, let's, young let's get a young lady on the end. <laughs> and come to the middle, young lady. Yeah, what? Come to the middle. Hey, turn it back on. What's your, what's your name? Can I shake your hand? What's your name? Lydia. Lydia? Yeah. She said, yeah. Go ahead. You got the mic. I want you to tell me whatever you feel. What's, what, what does working hard mean to you? What does a work ethic mean to you? And I'm not here. Don't look at me. Look at them. I don't want to see them. You don't want to see them? I see them every day. <laughs> I can see you. You can see me? <laughs> How old are you, young lady? And I'm old enough to be your father. Okay, I just, just want to make that clear. But what is a work at? No, no, no. What is a work at? Why'd you come up if you don't want to speak? I was want to speak, but like, I'm a speaker. Okay. You want to say? Let's get another young lady in. That's your sister? Go ahead, sis. Um, Mike, you got to hold the mic. Uh, no, could you reiterate your question? What, is, uh, what does work ethic mean to you? And what do y'all want to do with your lives? That's what I want to hear, too. Oh, can I answer that question? Yeah, go right ahead. I want to be a pharmacist. Why? Because... Because um. <laughs> they make a lot of money. Because they make a lot of money? Mm -hmm. Is How many of y'all want to get paid? I can tell you. Okay. What do you want to be? I'm going to come back to you and say, what do you want to be? I want to be a mortician. You want to be a mortician? Yeah. Why? Because I want to work on dead people. She, she, y'all heard what she said? Can I see that mic for a second? So she, she says she won't be a, a mortician because she want to work on dead people. Okay. They make a lot of money, don't they? There's a lot of dead people out there, right? Somebody die every day. Someone die every day. How many of y'all know someone who died who's been young, who's young? 
That's crazy. Look at those hands. Look, hold, keep your hands up. Look around at how many of you got their hands up. Y'all already know someone who's died. Think about that for a second. Now, how many of y'all want to live? Real talk. Why I'm asking this question? When I was coming up, I was raised by a single mother with an eighth grade education. We grew up on welfare. We were mad poor, right? And there was violence everywhere. How many of y'all have experienced violence in some form in your life? Y'all know what I'm talking about. You know? And I remember, and I grew up in the crack era, and it was crazy. How many of y'all ever watched The Chappelle Show? <laughs> okay. Obviously, Davis from D.C. Remember that character Tyrone on The Chappelle Show? That was real. You know what I'm saying? Those people were all over the place. But not just the folks that were crack, it was the folks who were actually selling crack, and people were just blowing each other away. I don't want y'all to think the way I thought, which was, I'm happy to make it to 15. I'm happy to make it to 18. I'm happy to make it to 21. I'm happy to make it to 30. You feel what I'm saying? It's like we're anticipating dying. Now, I want her to make a lot of money. Lydia, right? I want to make a lot of money, but I don't want to see, in our communities, we have mad churches and mad funeral parlors all over this country. This should be so, we should ask ourselves, why is there so many places where people can get buried? And why are these cemeteries loaded, so loaded with tombstones that they're like, like on top of each other? And so we gotta ask ourselves, what does life mean to us, you know what I mean? What you want, you say you wanna be a pharmacist, you wanna mm -hmm. make money. Is that all you wanna do, make money? No. What else you wanna do? Be happy. Mike. Uh, be happy. What makes you happy? Chick-fil-A. Ch <laughs> <laughs> Chick-fil-A makes you happy? Mm -hmm. What's that? That's why I be sad on Sundays. Why, because they close? Mm -hmm. <laughs> what, he said, oh, <laughs> he said, he said, what you be getting at Chick-fil-A? What do you order at Chick-fil-A? I get a number five, 12 count. Number five, 12, I don't even know. What's the 12 count? What is it? Chicken it's chicken nuggets? I don't go to Chick-fil-A. Okay. And that makes you happy. What else makes you happy? What else makes all of y'all happy? What do y'all want to do with your life? Money, what makes you happy? Give him the mic for a second, I want to hear you. I got something that makes me happy. Money makes me happy. Where you at? What'd you say? Money makes me happy. What about money? What about money? Because you get to get anything you want with money. Say that again. It's not all that emotional stuff. So if you have money, you going to be happy, y'all? Yeah. No. Who said, who said no? Hold, pass the mic. Who said no? One of y'all, I want to hear y'all. Hold on, I need y'all to listen. This is important. Um, good afternoon, my name is Jamal. Early College Academy. Uh, I don't think money is the pursuit of happiness because money is a material thing, I would call it. And it don't matter emotion. Money can save your life. It's just this. Money can't make you happy. What makes me happy? Is being here. Wow. I'm not saying that. I, I, can't, I can't live without money, but I need money to live, but thank you. Jump right, jump right in. Oh, jump right in. Jump right in. My name is Tell us how old you are. How old I am? <laughs> um, <laughs> what makes me happy is that I, I chase my dreams. I got this Amber Show going on. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> no, Amber Show? Yeah. What is it? Every Tuesday. On Snapchat, most of the And you see, I want to make people happy. So that's my way of making people happy. Oh, happy. Make you happy. Uh, other people have to make you happy. Yeah. Well, hold on. Tell me about this show. Talk about this show. Tell me about the show. Oh, you want to be on it? It's on Tuesday, though. Okay. Tell me about the show. Yeah. Wait, what's Lydia doing out there? <laughs> you got to come back. You got to come back. Go ahead, Andy. I'm sorry. So, on this show, I have guests every Tuesday. Okay. Welcome. Break, you know, so I get to the show. So I have commercial break. Who crack a little joke? Get a little joke in there. You're the host. Yeah. Oh. You want to be on my show? I'll be on your show. Okay. I got to come back to DC. No, it's not. 
It's on FaceTime. Okay, I'm down. So every Tuesday, what time on Tuesdays? Nine o'clock, stay tuned, guys. <laughs> Nine p.m. And you produce it yourself. Yes, sir. What made you come to the side you wanted to do? Well, um, growing up. <laughs> she, she liked that microphone. Episodes. But, but that's what I'm talking about. We're going to keep passing the mic. Jamal, you want to say something? Yeah. Uh, I, we kind of got a little track of talking about work ethics. I just wanted to tell you. <laughs> How are your grades? Uh, a and B student. Okay. I'm an A in class. You're number eight in the class? All right. So I don't think work ethics have a meaning. It depends on what you make. Work ethics is basically working hard and what you make it. If you think a uh, worth ethic is getting straight D's and measure your work ethic. Ethics I I wanna be what I wanna be when I grow up is <clears throat> I want what I wanna be when I grow up is a politician. I wanna serve the community. I I, I wanna serve my constituents. <laughs> Who's next? Who's next? Say something. Go right ahead. Please. Um, when I grow up, I want to be a zoologist. And What's a zoologist? A, a person who studies animals for a living. Okay. So you like animals? And, um, Someone said birds. <laughs> birds are animals, right? Yes, sir. Keep talking. But what makes me happy is giving back in, in return. I love that. Give a round of applause. Give it back to people and not expecting anything in return. You want to say that? Go ahead. Uh, I'm Rob. I'm a 17. No, no, you got to be respectful, Jamal. Come on. <laughs> Y'all are funny. Come on, sir. But what I want to do when I grow up is a forensic anthropologist. What's that? That's deep. Uh, it's the study of humans. Okay. And like drones. Okay. And like. <laughs> you gotta respect him, man. He was quiet when you were speaking, so you gotta be quiet when he's speaking. Alright. Um, and what you think to me is uh, exceeding your goals and not procrastinating. Exceeding your goals and not procrastinating. Give him a round of applause. I love that. Definition. So. Hold on a second, I just want to say something. Um, Y'all know what? Y'all know what? Geniuses. So if you're a genius, can you be an N-I-G-G-A at the same time? Yeah. You can? Who said yeah? Stand up to explain why. N-I-G-G-A. Can you be a genius and an N-I-G-G-A at the same time? Yes. I want someone out there. Hold on a second, Jamal. You said yes. Who said yes? Stand up. It could be N-I-G-G-E-R-U-H-A-H-A. Does it even matter at this point? Does it matter? I'm asking y'all though, y'all know what? So can you be a genius and an N-I-G-G-A at the same time? Why not? What's up, 33? I got you, stuff. So, all right, let's, let's get, let's, this is just real talk. If we call each other that word, do y'all care? But if someone outside your community calls you that word, y'all get you, you mad about it? Why? Okay. Where did y'all are geniuses, right? Where did the word come from? 
White people, which white people? Excuse me. Rich white people? Racist people? The real meaning of a nigga, niggas, if you do your research, it means king. Because they used to call it Africans, they used to call it kings, niggas. That's where the real meaning came from. So you can be a nigga. You've been listening to Kendrick Lamar? Yeah. You can't be a nigga and a, uh, a genius at the same time. It depends on how you use the word. How do you use the word? I use it as a king. So Come on up and explain. I'll explain to you. The actual meaning of nigga is a king. So what you say? Oh, yeah, my nigga. Come on up and talk. Oh, yeah, my king. Yeah, boy. 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 Yeah, I use it as a king. I don't use it as a, what the white folks used to call people. Y'all agree with him? <laughs> so, how many of y'all love to eat food? Make some noise. If you love to eat food, make some noise. If you love to eat food, make some noise. I want y'all to be mad honest with me. Tell the truth. How many of y'all make mad noise if you love to read books? All right, food. Make noise if you love food. Books. All right. Listen. And I hope y'all remember this, and I'm saying this with the, the, the adults here as well. I don't, I don't use the word publicly ever. I used to curse in all my, I write poetry, I used to curse when I, when I was at Vibe Magazine, we would put all kinds of words into articles. At a certain point, I just said, you know what? I'm not using that word publicly anymore. I need y'all, if y'all serious, the same energy that y'all made about food, we should be making about reading books on a regular basis. Yeah, you can. Yes, you can. Let me, let me explain it to you. Can you listen for a second? Can you respect me? I respect you. Yes, you can. Because if you don't eat food, follow me for a second, for a couple of days, what happens? If you don't eat for a week or two, what happens? If you don't eat for a year, what happens? I'm, I'm talking to you. What happens? You. Nice and loud. So what happens? You die. What happens if you don't feed your mind by reading on a regular basis? No, no, I'm being serious. What'd you say? You alive, you might be alive physically, but what's happening with your mind? You know how I'm explaining to you? Like this. Now, I don't know if y'all realize this, but look at where y'all are. Y'all in a real privileged position. Y'all at one of the elite schools. Hold on, this is serious, y'all. Y'all at one of the elite schools in this country, right? But when I go back to New York, this is what I got to deal with. Young men in and out of the prison system. Young ladies in and out of the prison system. And when I sit down and talk with heads who are not even thinking about any kind of school, you know what they want? They just want their GED if they can get that. You know what I'm saying? Because somewhere they stop learning and reading and feeding their minds, and so they don't see the big picture. It's the same thing as not eating food, because you're not learning on a regular basis. Y'all can do whatever y'all want with the word N-I-G-G-A, or A-H, or U-H, however you spell it. But I want to say to y'all, there's a book out there called The N-Word. Y'all should look it up. If you're going to use a word, if y'all geniuses, you should at least know where the word came from. And the writer who wrote this book actually used to write for the Washington Post here in, in this city. And the reason why he wrote the book is because he heard the word all over the place. He's like, where did this word come from? How many of y'all have ever listened to Richard Pryor? Would there be any Kevin Hart or Chris Rock if there was no Richard Pryor? Well, Richard Pryor back in the night, who, what word did Richard Pryor use more than any other word? The N word. Right? But then in the early 80s, Richard Pryor went to Africa. He said, you know what, I realized when I was in Africa, there ain't no niggas, quote unquote, in Africa. And so we gotta ask ourselves, if we said white people or rich people or racists created this word, 
Or if you're a genius, that also should mean that you want to be free. Free people don't use the words that someone else created for them to use. Do you feel what I'm saying? And free people don't use a word amongst each other and don't think it's a big deal. Then we go turn around and get mad when someone outside the community uses it. That's someone who's a slave. And I don't want to be a slave, and y'all shouldn't want to be slaves either, because that's saying that someone can give you a script like you on a TV show or a movie, and they can tell you exactly how you're going to react when something goes down. Y'all feel me? Like when someone gets shot by the police, like the dude in Baltimore just the other day, you feel what I'm saying? Gets murdered by the police. People know already we're going to march, we're going to be angry for a couple of days, maybe a couple of weeks, and then we're going to go back to doing nothing. You feel me? But if you're a genius, if you got a work ethic, if you know your history, if you know where you came from, if you are in love with who you are, let me ask y'all a real simple question. How many of y'all are Africans? How many Africans out there? That's the problem right there. One tenth of y'all raised your hands. Everyone is from Africa. The whole world is from Africa. It's the cradle of civilization. Don't take my word for it. Just in case you need to find someone outside your community to prove it, go to HuffingtonPost.com and look up articles written by anthropologists talking about all civilization came from Africa. No matter what your race is, everything started there. You feel what I'm saying? But if we don't read, we don't study, we don't travel, we never leave the DMV, we never leave the East Coast, you know, we only listen to certain kinds of music, only watch certain kinds of TV shows, our minds are not going to grow, and that's just as much, that's just as bad as not eating. That's starving your brain. You feel me? So I got a question for y'all who like to read. What do you read? What do you read? I read articles. What kind of articles? Articles about what's going on in the world and uh, like political articles. Okay. Who else? What do y'all read? Anyone out there? What do y'all read? What do y'all read? I read social media. Articles social media. Sports. Come up. I want you to come up. Please. My leg hurt too. And I'm older than you. I'm standing up. My leg hurt too. Come on up. Should I come to you? Okay. What's your name? I don't need the mic because I talk about it. No, but he needs it for the camera. Please. What did you say? You read social media? Break it down for us. Hold the mic up. Okay, okay. Who's on social media a lot? What do y'all read on social media? I want to hear what y'all read on social media. Gossip. Who's going to talk and actually say what they read? Okay. I'm sorry. What's up, man? You good? That was for you. Who, who's going to talk themselves, not raise their hand on somebody else? Who's going to actually speak, y'all? I'm going to speak. Okay. Hi, I'm Kristen. Okay, nowadays on social media, all you see is relationships, people being lonely or in love, so-called. You see sex all the time. Everybody want to be a rapper. Everybody want to be a stripper. Everybody want to be a video victim. Everybody want to be getting money. Everybody want to hear all this designer. Everybody can think traffic. Yeah. You, you see all that, that's all you see. Everybody can get practice. What's your name? Give her a round of applause. I'm sure you're honest. I forgot everybody can get practice. What's your name? My name is Crystal. Crystal. So, and how old are you, Crystal? I'm 17. And you're in what grade? I'm a senior. Graduating. Let's give it up for the seniors graduating. Yeah. Here we go. Class of 2015 is in the building. So, Crystal, what do you want? Are you going to college? 
Yeah. Do you know where you're going? Hold on, y'all. Where are you going? I'm going to Morgan State University. Morgan State, that's right. What kind of school is Morgan State? It's a HBCU. What does that mean for those who don't know? You got people watching on live stream. Us the historically black university. Yo, this is live too. This is why now y'all want to be serious. But you know why this is important? A lot of, hey, hey folks, let's be serious for a second here. And I know y'all are. A lot of people write off your gener generation. And I, I'm not one of those people, because when I was in your age range, I hated it when older adults would say all kinds of ridiculous stuff about young people. Focus on how we dress, how we talk, our tattoos, our piercing. Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. And what I'm saying to y'all, I know y'all are geniuses. You know what I mean? But no one's going to know you're a genius if y'all don't want to speak. You know what I mean? I'm not here trying to give a whole speech. I want y'all to be the ones talking. I'm here to facilitate the conversation. Now, you just dropped a lot of science just now. How do you change all the stuff that you just said? If we're focused on sex and all the stuff you're talking about, how do we change that? Or how do we make it more balanced? I mean, right now, you can't. Who else wanted to say something? Dang! Hold up, I'm on you no, know? I'm, I'm, I'm not leaving you. Someone did, but people are yelling out. I'm trying to see who said something. Let me respond to y'all. You can watch All right. Right now you can't change because that's what you see on an everyday basis. That's what you see on TV, that's what you see on the radio, that's what you see. That's what in music, movies, that's what you see. But Crystal, keep the mic for a second. Hey, I got something to say. Wait, hold on a second. How does that affect you as a young woman? If you play for one of these strippers, Dixons, rappers, how does that affect you? How do you can how do you how do you conduct yourself? And how do you think young people should conduct themselves in spite of all of that? I mean, I'm just telling myself to hold it back, because that's not how I look at myself, but in general, uh, generally, that's how, you know, people then look at girls and how they're supposed to be, that's how they curse, right? Like, a girl is, I mean, it's, you know, people are looking at the other people, they're like, oh, that's a girl, 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 I don't want to say uh, it's not, you know, how to say that's what you want to say. The people that you follow post and stuff, so that's what you, so like, just to go, you got to Twitter, right? Do you, do you see sex videos going up and down your timeline because the people you follow? So it, it depends on who you follow. So if, <laughs> if, you, follow, if you follow the, the people that you, the stuff that you want to see, then that's, you won't see that type of stuff. I want you to respond and want Chris to respond. Let's listen, y'all. Go ahead. So your name? Jonathan. Get ready, Jonathan. I believe it's, it's all based on maturity. You know, because people, you may be 18, you may be 25, but that doesn't mean you're mature as a person that's 18 years old. It, it all depends on your mindset. So like you said, uh, you know, things may be different. Things may be different from the people you follow from the next person. So it all depends on, it all depends on your mindset and who the people you want to hang around. That's all it is. You follow sex videos at <laughs> <laughs> But, I mean, but you know what? What he said is important. How many of y'all got a father in your lives? Okay. How many of y'all don't have a father in your life? Yeah, let me say this for a second, y'all. And Crystal, I, I forget you, Crystal. But let me say this. Two years ago, two Thanksgivings ago, y'all, I found my father for the first time since I was eight years old, right? It, it, ain't, that, it, it ain't that exciting. I found out that my father, and there's good men out there, because I'm a good man, Mr. Sean's a good man, there's good men in this room, you know what I mean? But I found out that my father, who did not grow up in the era of all the stuff we were talking about, he has children born in the 1950s, the 1960s, the 1970s, and the 1980s. You feel what I'm saying? Think about, hold on. Think about the level of addiction to sex to produce that many kids in four different decades from rock and roll to hip hop. Y'all feel what I'm saying? So what he said, what John just said is important. What is the level of maturity? Be you 17 or 27 or 37, 47, right on up to 77? Crystal. I'm sorry, can you repeat that question? 
I thought you wanted to respond to something I said up here. I do, but bring it back. You a leader, right? Yes, ma'am. Mic out there. Who's got the mic? Okay. You speaking? Yeah. Um, what you said, I don't, I don't agree with that at all. I feel like it, it depends on what, what you, where you put yourself at, what situation you put yourself in. If you don't want to see it, you're not going to see it. Like it's that people who are in the town, who you follow, what you need to do, what you sit in, all that. Do y'all? No. You want to say something? Can I do that? Um, okay. 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 that word again? What does that mean? The redhead. What's your name? What up, Tayo? Peace.
So you can tell me real quick, how old was Carter G. Wilson when he got out of high school? 18. He was in his 20s. But let's give him a round of applause for knowing about Wheezy. Now here's the point to it. Let me pass the mic back to her. The reason why I'm talking about self-love and love and work ethic, all this stuff, he was a National Honor Society student. And we know he's one of the biggest rappers in the world. Now, y'all all say y'all want to make money, right? I don't want to be poor. I grew up on what, y'all, with my mother? How far did my mother go to school? Where's my father at? I grew up dirt poor. But even if you get the money, follow me for a second. And I don't judge because in my lifetime, I'm talking about real talk, right? I've drank liquor, I've smoked weed, you name it. Oh, no, 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 ain't no yeah. I'm also, no, no, because I'm also a vegan now. And I drink water and protein drinks and I don't do any of that stuff anymore. You know what I mean? Because, hold on, follow me for a second. If you don't read, if you don't study, if you don't travel, if you don't understand that you're a genius in everything you do, you become Lil Wayne where you're high all the time making babies all over the place. And then you realize, you wake up one day, and you realize, man, I've been selling all these records, and I'm not even making the money I should have made for these records. Y'all feel me? I'm gonna get some this. Whatever you want. Whatever you want to talk about. You want to think about it? Pass the mic over here. Go to the middle, bro. Are y'all thinking about this? Let me ask y'all a question. What do y'all feel if y'all can watch me? If you can say anything to teachers, parents, older adults that they do not understand about young people that they need to understand, what would those things be? Amber, jump in, Amber. Jump in. You got something to say?
Cool. Crystal? I want to say to adults and teachers and they need to understand that, you know, teaching and young kids is an issue that we go through as well as, you know, you gotta sit up though. Antoine right behind you. We have interns every summer, college students, right? Hear me out for a second. And I could tell the students who had basic home training and the ones who did not. You know what I mean? Now, think about it. You're in school, and y'all talk about work ethic. You need to see school as a place of business, which means you need to handle your business. Would you agree? So if you haven't got a job, and you got out of a job, could you just throw your feet up on the desk at a job? If you're the boss, I'm the boss. I work for myself. But even, even when I'm working, I'm not just throwing my feet up and chilling. I'm working. You feel me? Antoine? Let's give it up for Antoine. This is my man right here. Whatever you want. What you thinking about? I'm going to talk about what he needs to talk about. Like, it was school. Like, school is not Y'all saying it's the way y'all are talked to that bothers you sometimes? Mm. Antoine, keep the, keep the mic for Let's give him a round of applause. So, go ahead, go ahead. Do y'all agree with that? Yes. Do y'all think y'all should respect older people? Yes. yes. I do. It goes both ways. It goes both ways. It goes. Jump in, Jay. Jump in to answer. I didn't like, want to think about what Rob said. It, it's not necessarily if they don't respect you, you don't respect you. Respect them back. If you in this job environment, your manager disrespects you. Are you gonna get disrespected back? I'm just like, like, it, it, they they here to help you. You not here to help them. They already got their degree. So I, so I just, I, nah, I, I, I ain't trying to be over there. Sad. It's, 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 it's real talk. Tell y'all real talk. Like, they here to help y'all. Y'all disrespecting them. Yeah, we got to wrap this up. 
The last two right here. Okay, man. We gotta wrap it up, y'all. I say to have have maturity and not be ignorant. Just for adults and children. Because mm. no matter how old you are, you can be ignorant That's and right. you can be n not mature. You should have maturity and respect yourself. Okay, I say, um, like you said earlier, Miss Kevin, respect should go both ways. So, from teaching themselves, they should not teach a certain way to students. But at the same time, if they do, the students should approach that in the right way. Like I'm trying to go back and forth with the teacher, with like go to, because you're not going to win. So either way, the adult is going to win. So if you go towards another adult, such as administration or things like that, then the problem will be. Nine p.m. Now you will say it loud. We gotta wrap this up. Say it loud. Nice and loud. Okay.